What's going on, Workforce? Brian here. Chris here. And today we're talking about Fire Bobby Kotnick. I'm probably mispronouncing his name. The CEO of Activision Blizzard. In the wake of almost 800 uh, people being fired, obviously there is a movement coming from the employees, the ex-employees, and gamers in general, maybe sympathetic or not, um, against Activision Blizzard. Essentially, what does it mean to boycott them, what does it mean for this year? And I, we, I've got some thoughts, and Chris is actively playing World of Warcraft right now, and he has told me privately, and we'll talk about it here, you know, like, what does the future hold? And so, Chris, like, I think this is a really good opportunity to talk about, obviously, the unfortunate news of, you know, almost 800 people getting fired, probably not necessarily more, but people will be leaving, we would assume. Uh, it's probably part of their calculation of like, okay, well, we're gonna lay off this many, We'll see like an additional percentage of the workforce also find another job at some point. What What's your thoughts? What's your takeaway? Um, yeah, hit me up. So, I mean, yes, first of all, when you do a big layoff like this, there's a good chance that in the last year you didn't lose nobody because there's very few companies that have 100% retention. So you're, you're in the process of losing people. Normally you would backfill those positions, but instead you go through a big layoff and then you announce it's like 120 or 140 new position openings, which are all dev centered but you're gonna piss a lot of devs off. You're also gonna see people who like, just imagine for a second that like Brian works there and gaming industry is, is really tight knit. And a lot of times you have to work on site. So if they let go of somebody in a position and they get hired by somebody who's not in Irvine or within a commutable distance of Irvine, that family picks up and moves. If their spouse is a Blizzard employee, they leave. If mm -hmm. their best friend blizzard employee they leave so there's going to be plenty of of just attrition throughout the year i'm sure and i'm, I'm sure there's some hr equation for determining that um because that's just to be expected there is this kind of call to fire the ceo because he's obviously doing things that we don't think mike would have done um the cynical side of me says like why raise your voices like if they don't listen to fans well enough to get the Diablo Immortal announcement right, if they don't listen to fans well enough to handle a lot of the news around this correctly, and if they don't care enough about internal employees to have given them like a heads up and all that, then I don't know why they'd care about ex employees. Like it's just like if you see me start to like fall off the wagon at work, fall off the wagon in my in my relationships with my friends and my wife, like I don't know that like ex girlfriends from college are, are going to think that I'm suddenly there to bail them out. Like it just, I, I don't know that that's their focus right now. Um, I would love to say those people can have an impact. I just don't see it. But my question is, where does Blizzard go from here? Yeah. And it's something I'm a part of so as a gamer. One of the things that the way I look at it and the thought that I immediately had, and I told you was that there's no better time to fire, you know, or let go or have this kind of layoff. And it's, you know, I'm not meaning that in a heartless way. I just meaning that, they're betting on gamers and their their attention, you know, their retention to this feeling and this kind of thought. And what I mean by that is that they have no real releases coming out in 2019. Now, Activision Total, then you've got, you know, Call of Duty and other games. And so this can have a global or a larger impact than just Blizzard games itself. And the only real way to hurt or send that message because the only real way the message gets received is all of a sudden it's like, well, we were expecting a 10% drop in WoW subscriptions and all of that, but it ends up being like a 70% drop. And it's like, whoa, the bottom falls out. Like the only real way to hurt them is not to purchase things in Overwatch, but Overwatch has been struggling in the wake of Fortnite. The only, you know, so like with all of their games and their properties and how they monetize them, like I symbolically uninstalled Diablo 3 from my PC in, you know, in solidarity with kind of this, this idea, but that doesn't hurt them whatsoever. Diablo 3 isn't taking any more of my money and I'm not actually actively, uh, you know, playing Diablo 3 in a way that it's like, oh man, you know, I really was hoping to play Diablo 3 today on the PC. And no, that ends up not being the case. My my effort, my ability to do anything in this case is so benign that the only thing I can really do is, is talk about it and bring it up as a part of a discussion itself because it's the best thing I saw was Ubisoft then announced record profits and didn't lay off anybody was the was the meme. It's like, hey guys, we had we had a record year. It was amazing. And we fired nobody because of it. I will jump in and say that a lot of the articles have been claiming record profits. Mm -hmm 
an article that says that profits are actually down six and a quarter percent when compared to this time last year. Yeah, it's revenue um, that's definitely up, but expenses is essentially revenues up and your profits go down. That means your expenses are too high. Mm -hmm. You're not publishing any games in 2019, letting go of your publishing arm, at least in a short sighted manner, whether or not it's it's a dick move, we can debate, but it's at least mathematically sound. Yeah. Um, if you are pulling out of Heart of the Storm, if Overwatch is slowing down and you don't really plan on having an esports presence outside of them, an esports team is suddenly a group of people that you don't necessarily have a full workload for to get that max efficiency out of paying them. And so letting them go mathematically makes sense. Now, is it a dick move that like the people who made Hearthstone and Overwatch what they are to just push them out in the cold with little to no warning in mass? Yeah, it's kind of a dick move. Thankfully, they got their profit sharing. I do wonder if a company that's run like this will continue profit sharing in the future because it feels like um, the bean counters that probably helped fuel this decision yeah. are probably not a fan of giving people severance packages and profit sharing checks as they leave. Um, the good person in me says like, that's awesome that they get you know, one last check to thank you for what you've done and the great severance package. But I just don't know that all businesses are that generous moving forward. Um, so what do you do? So like to punish them, you say, okay, I'm not gonna pre-order or buy any games from Blizzard in 2019. So I'm not gonna get Warcraft 3 reforged. Right. I had pre-ordered it. I was gonna pre-order it because I was gonna play it. And once I was close enough that I was sure I was gonna play it, I wanted the mountain wow. Now I'm just not gonna get it. But that's not that big of a punishment. Like I can't punish them more than that. So I think you're absolutely right. It's hard to punish somebody who doesn't have anything to lose. Right. Um, and that's where I'm wondering to see if, because like, I guess the speculation would be like, are they working on Diablo 2 remastered? And really we don't get the feeling they are. And when we, when we get that feeling, it's just the, qu the question I pose to you is that come BlizzCon, is it, oh, here's Diablo 4 and, and this, and it's dropping soon. And, you know, at what point, like, that, that's why I, when I look at it from just a strategic perspective, they're banking on when that happens, when they say like, oh, look at what we've been working on and now we're ready to show it off and you're excited and it's not a mobile game and it's not phones and Blizzard's back. Uh, you know, how hard and how difficult does that end up translating, you know, into that perception of uh, of the fire movement, of the, of the boycott movement? Because if there was something to really kind of like you know, really press this on. It's it's WoW subs. And so I'm wondering what impact that's gonna have because honestly, when we look at the the outrage towards EA, like as just a direct comparison, Activision and EA, nobody's defending these two companies whatsoever, but then they come in and drop like Apex Legends and it's like, oh, it, with loot boxes, eh, it's, you know, then you hear people who are like, ah, and then they're like, well, it's not so bad. You know, it's like, wait, okay. what'd you say? Sorry, cut up. They've had personnel changes over the years. So mm -hmm. they used to have more of a bean counting mentality, right? They used to have more of that. Uh, games don't need to be, uh, I think that's actually the Activision CEO that said it, that games don't need to be fun. They need to make money. He did and, say it. And, it was Bobby Codnick or whatever. Have, yeah, EA used to have that mentality. Yeah. And I think they realized that making games fun does make money. I think they've realized that you can be bullies with your IP like Nintendo or Disney but that ultimately like Nintendo and Disney, that your creative side needs to be in their protective little bubble to make things that are just fun for the sake of it. And if they say it needs six months, you just have to, you have to balance the budget over here to make it happen because mm -hmm. whatever, whatever magic is happening in that creative department needs to be left alone unless it's not working. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, it's just at the end of the day, we're going to keep following this kind of story in this concept what is it for you like so what i guess a final thought is like as you're evaluating you're currently subscribed to to, to wow because you buy in yeah. bulk you know i will like, i will play because i have active subscription time i don't believe in destroying your nike shoes because you already gave them the money so what uh what evaluation like how long do you know how long your sub is and what kind of evaluation process are you kind of making on world of warcraft right now because i know you've been working on several guides for the for the content yeah. Yeah, I, and I was, yeah, I was, and they were recorded before all this happened, and I felt like releasing them, and I was like, well, that sends a mixed message. <laughs> uh, so I haven't, I haven't published them, but um, they, I'll play through the end of my sub. I don't have the date on hand. I got a couple months left. Uh, I buy it in big chunks, so I'll play through at least then. Um, if I take a break at that point, it'll be to play other games. It, it's not necessarily wholeheartedly to stick it to WoW like a 
you know, I'm going to sit around and stare at the wall to show Blizzard who's boss. It's that gaming's a big industry and we've talked about it before. And if mm -hmm. somebody, somebody's going to do, make a game that's not fun or be a dick or anything like that, then I can just pull out of that game and go play something else. Um, it's just, it's too easy to find somebody that will respect the entire gaming experience from the gameplay to liking them. But it's also hard to care about too many things. Like if we want good employee treatment, and we want good gameplay experience, how can we also say that we want good monetization methods? Because they have to make enough money that they can take good care of their employees and they can take long enough to make good games. It starts to get like, if you care about too many things, you very quickly, it's like, well, I can't play Blizzard because they're mean to their employees. And I can't play EA because they don't do monetization right. And I can't play, you know, you know, so-and-so because they're not fun anymore. And it's like, okay well then who do you play like you, you just not play video games anymore uh so you do have to kind of prioritize that so mm -hmm. i would say the question is what would blizzard have to do to get me back okay if i leave it's not necessarily like oh i hope they die it's what would need to happen to come back mm -hmm. and that, i mean blizzcon if there is another blizzcon because we know that's a loss leader so if they're cutting costs i imagine they cut a lot of the staff that plan blizzcon and if they don't have anything also to announce at the time if they don't have like hey here's diablo 4 what are we here for like we don't want to do the whole mobile thing and meme it up again but in the next in the next major announcement from blizzard we know from the last blizzcon sitting around the panels that there are roughly three things being worked on um diablo 4 is is most assuredly one of those things uh, when we look at other franchises that have not been redone it would be logical that if wow classic and warcraft Three Reforge does well that you would then reboot another RPG and another RTS, mm -hmm. and that's Starcraft, probably Brood War, I assume was the most successful, and then Diablo probably two, because Diablo two was the most successful. So I would imagine you'd start with those instead of starting at the beginning. Um, if done well, I would come back for those, and and at that point, how do you plan that? Do you release? I mean, Diablo four and Diablo two can't really release at the same time because you're competing for the same player base, but you could build them into the same purchase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a part of like, hey, here's your here's your even number Diablos. You can kind of jump around. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Like we said, we'll keep watching it. Um, yeah, for me, uh, obviously, I have no like. I feel like I've got no skin in the game. I have nothing I can do to like really send a message other than keep talking about it and uh, you know and obviously saying that we as consumers have the power to choose we have the power to really send messages and it's just a matter if we have the the willpower or the fortitude to continue on that message so i would just say for anybody who's uh, on this train you know define what victory means in this case for you you know like because otherwise you could paint yourself into a hard uh, corner in which that like everybody's having fun but you know, oh remember like you know a year ago when they fired 800 people and how horrible that was it's like yeah that sucks that's horrible um and it seems like they're banking like i said on that by the time they're ready to show what they're working on that we're gonna have forgotten because over the course of let's say a year a lot's gonna happen sure somebody else is gonna mess up royally and we'll have our attention drawn to it so it seems, uh, it's unfortunate, it's very strategic, and for me, uh, you know, symbolically, uninstall Diablo, so. <laughs> um, guys, for work to game my name's Brian. My name's Chris. Let us know what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Uh, if you're a part of this movement, if you feel like it's uh, something that you should, should join in, or if it's something that you, you know, don't see happening, um, you know, and uh, yeah, we'd love to know your thoughts and uh, what you're doing. Uh, sound off the cops a little, let's have that conversation. Um, but anyway, we hope you have a fantastic day, and take care. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's me, Brian. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're new here, we hope you hit that subscribe button. Check us out. We talk a lot about video games and we hope to at least hear from you in the comments below. We also try to respond to our comments. You know, we really appreciate the comments, the discussion, all the various points of view that everybody is so kindly, uh, I guess, and politely or impolitely shares with us from time to time. So anyway, guys, again, uh, thanks for watching this video. We hope you hit that like button. We hope you hit that subscribe button. Come back for more content each and every day. Uh, we post a lot around here and we'd love to hear from you about what you like about video games and everything. And uh, especially if you have any questions that you're stuck on in anything. So anyway, signing off. <laughs> See you next time.